The Lord be with you. Welcome this morning. Now, after having been isolated last week, uh, I have been released. Thankfully, a negative COVID test. Um, But today, today we will hear of Jesus telling and, in fact, taking the disciples away to isolate, uh, but for the purpose of rest. So, as we gather together with all of the disciples and all the saints and martyrs, let us pray together. Almighty, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom the secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbor in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Lord of all power and might, the author and giver of all good things. Graft in our hearts the love of your name, increasing us through religion. Nourish us with all goodness, and of your great mercy keep us in the same. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please sit for our readings. 
A reading from the book of Jeremiah. Woe to the shepherds who destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, says the Lord. Therefore, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, concerning the shepherds who shepherd my people, it is you who have scattered my flock and have driven them away, and you have not attended to them. So I will attend to you for your evil doings, says the Lord. Then I myself will gather the remnant of my flock out of all the lands where I have driven them, and I will bring them back to their fold, and they shall be fruitful and multiply. I will raise up shepherds over them who will shepherd them, and they shall not fear any longer or be dismayed nor should any be missing, says the Lord. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch, and he shall reign as king and deal wisely, and shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In his days, Judah will be saved, and Israel will live in safety. And this is the name by which he will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from Paul's letter to the Ephesians. So then, remember that at one time you Gentiles by birth called the uncircumcision by those who are called the circumcision, a physical circumcision made in the flesh by human hands. Remember that you were at that time without Christ, being aliens from commonwealth of Israel, and the strangers to the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ, for he is our peace. In his flesh, he has made both groups into one and has broken down the dividing wall, that is, the hostility between us. He has abolished the law with its commandments and ordinances so that he might create in himself one new humanity and in the place of the two, thus making peace and might reconcile both groups to the God in one body through the cross, thus putting himself to death that hostility through it. So he came and proclaimed peace to you, who were far off and peace to those who were near. For through him, both of us have access in one spirit to the Father. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are citizens with the saints and also members of the household of God. Built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, without Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone. In him, the whole structure is joined together and groups and grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you are also built together spiritually in a, dwell, in a dwelling place for God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. The apostles returned from their mission. They gathered around Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. 
He said to them, come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. For many were coming and going and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in the boat to a deserted place by themselves. Now, many saw them going and recognized them and they hurried there on foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of them. As he went ashore, he saw a great crowd and he had compassion for them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. When they had crossed over, they came to, a, to land at Gennesaret and moored the boat. When they got out of the boat, people at once recognized him and rushed about that whole region and began to bring the sick on mats to wherever they heard he was. And wherever he went into villages or cities or farms, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they might touch even the fringe of his cloak. And all who touched it were healed. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please have a seat. It feels quite strange to have been, in fact, two weeks since I was last here for the 10 a.m. service on a Sunday. One week, I was down the road at Emmanuel in West Hampstead, supporting Helen in her first week in her new role. And last week, we were having to isolate, waiting on a test to come back. It might seem like I've been off. Doesn't really feel it though. In that time, an enormous number of people have had a similar experience of self-isolation because they had been in proximity to somebody who had had a positive test result. 500,000 in one week. And yesterday, so many on the Metropolitan Line staff were isolating, they had to close it. And yet after a delay of a few weeks, tomorrow the rules are massively relaxed and it becomes a matter for each individual organization, venue, retailer, and person to make decisions about what precautions they will take. The pandemic and all the things associated with it, and indeed our own attempts to carry on in some fruitful way around it, coping with the things that happen in life anyways, have been wearing. And while it may seem for many like tomorrow gives us some new freedoms, we also need to be aware that for some who are most at risk, it is the exact opposite. It is a time when many will feel uncomfortable, more uncomfortable, leaving their homes for fear of those not taking precautions. For those who need to make decisions about the rules in their place of work or for their customers or visitors, tomorrow means they need to make all those decisions for themselves with no backstop, no sense that there's somebody else who's got the inside scoop, has some idea and set out rules for them. Suddenly, all may, nobody must, and some should applies to practically everything we do. And in the constant onslaught of rule changes and guidance updates and data on the rates of infections and hospital admittance and rates of vaccinations and double vaccinations and on the number of deaths, we're all in one way or another being worn down by this barrage. The nature of working from home through the pandemic has eroded the barrier between home life and work life even more than it already had been. The benefit of being able to have a meeting without having to leave one's home is offset by one's sitting room or even bedroom becoming your place of work and homeschooling from which you can never escape. 
And here this week, as we prepare for the school's summer holidays, we get this reading from Mark, where Jesus gathers the apostles, the ones he'd sent out, quite literally, and hears what they've been up to. And he takes them away to rest. And when a crowd comes chasing after them, Jesus is the one who goes and has compassion on them and responds to their needs as he continues to do again and again and again. You could say this is an example of a case where Jesus is telling us to do the exact opposite of what he does. He tells them to go and rest and then he doesn't. Not because he's a bad example, though, but because he is Jesus. And he can. There's a common joke among clergy that when you're reading through adverts for new posts in the church times, the advert is always looking for Jesus himself to come and fill the role. And sadly, the parish will have to cope with just another human being. Ultimately, it is God who will shepherd us, who will care for us, and who will show us the way home, as in Jeremiah's reading this morning. God will raise up one of the branch of David, we're told. And so Jesus comes and is with us and remains with us and works with us and through us and through all those around us. It's a lesson I must force myself to remember. Not everything needs or indeed should involve me. It is God that will make things work out in the end. And God does that not by making me perfect, but by working through all of us and by working through others who we don't even know. In the last year and a half through online streaming, through our outreach, through gardening along the verges, and through our responses to the needs of our neighbors and friends, we have all of us increased the sphere of our relationships as a community and as a church. We have increased the number of people engaging with our mission. And that means we have new people worshiping with us here in the church, online, who many of us still might not yet know. We have welcomed in many volunteers who have worked alongside us to care for those in need. Though we haven't necessarily all met them, God is working through each of them. In Paul's letter to the Ephesians, he talks about how in Jesus, the boundaries between those who were in and those who were out of the people of God is broken down. Jesus comes proclaiming peace to all so that all are made one in Christ's body. As we increase the sphere of our relationships, we realize that the boundaries which we imagine are there between us and those who are outside or other are broken down and changed. The walls become porous, allowing us to reach out and others to come in as we share the mission God has given us. Back in March, the PCC agreed a new mission action plan, which I hope to have some posters and displays up about soon. In it, we highlight the resources we need to develop in order to live out our mission, a mission to be the place at the center of Child's Hill where the love of God is encountered in Christ. And among those resources that we need to grow and develop are our partnerships, our sphere of relationships, as we work with those we know and we don't know, but who God sends to work with us so that we can truly accomplish the things that God has called us to do. And so it's important for each of us, I think, at this time particularly, to hear Jesus' invitation to come away to a deserted place all by ourselves and rest a while. 
As we come through this summer, we will need that rest. We will need to be kind to ourselves. To recognize that it is in God that all is accomplished. It is in God that things will work out. It is in God that we can find that rest. To do so confident in his ultimate responsibility for our future. And in the knowledge that God will send among us those to share the load. So that we can each flourish in the gifts that God has poured out upon us. And share them in the way that God intends. With joy and happiness, even in the midst of challenge and sorrow. Let us stand to declare our faith in God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, True God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures, He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. So let us pray for the church and for the world and for all according to their needs. Knowing God's love and concern for us all, let us settle ourselves in his presence and pray to him now. Recognizing the brokenness and disunity of Christ's church, we pray that he may draw us closer to one another as we draw closer to him. We pray for all our Christian brothers and sisters in this neighborhood and for all who are searching for meaning in their lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With the noise of global conflicts and human deprivation thundering in our ears, with the questions and doubts clamoring, we pray that the Lord may shepherd our humanness and lead us in the secret places of the heart. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With the stressed and overburdened, the overworked and the unemployed. We pray for balanced lives, for physical, mental, and spiritual health, for patience in times of trouble, and direction in times of confusion. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for this parish of Charles Hill, and especially for All Saints School, as they, Jack and Jill Nursery, and other local schools come to the end of their terms. We pray for the Year Sixes, moving on to secondary school. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who are sick in body, mind, or spirit. We pray especially for Veronica Graham, Janice Bernard, and all those known to you alone. May they find healing in the comfort of your Holy Spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear us as we remember those who have died in the faith of Christ. Among them, Barbara Lee and Rachel Sishinga. And in the ear's mind, Brian King, Kathleen Gardner, Margaret Brighton and Gladys Cook. According to your promises, grant us with them a share in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Rejoicing in the fellowship of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Gregory, Macrina, Margaret Antioch, and all your saints, we commend ourselves and all people to your unfailing love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please stand. Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet in his name and we share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Please, from your places, do offer one another a sign of peace. Be assured of peace.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this bread to set before you, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this wine to set before you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living word, through whom you have created all things, who is sent by you in your great goodness to be our Savior. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh as your Son, born of the Blessed Virgin. He lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood, the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. So we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. We bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup so that we in the company of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Gregory, Macrina, Margaret of Antioch, and all the saints may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be yours, almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Savior has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Draw you with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you. Feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. The body of Christ, keep us all in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The blood of Christ, keep us all in eternal life. Amen. Amen.
Let us pray. Lord God, whose son is the true vine and the source of life, ever giving himself that the world may live, may we so receive within ourselves the power of his death and passion, that in his saving cup, we may share his glory and be made perfect in his love. For he is alive and reigns now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of the Son of Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. <clears throat> to begin with, I publish the bans of marriage between Jonathan Rayner Betts of this parish and Alexandra Sophia McGee of St. John's Fulham. If any of you know cause or impediment why these two persons should not be joined together in holy matrimony, you are to declare it. This is the first time of asking. Shall we good? Notices. Um, well, so whatever you want to call tomorrow, uh, I suppose it's worth telling you what we're going to be doing next Sunday. Going forward, the PCC had a discussion. We effectively feel that uh, the things we have in place are probably quite good to keep on with. And so we will continue asking people to please wear face coverings when they're in church. Or, and to continue social distancing. The pews will continue to be tight as they are um, for the time being going forward. Um, we'll do those wherever possible. And similarly, the, the communion, the distribution, taking in one kind, we will continue in that uh, vein going forward. That said, the relaxation does mean we have the freedom to do certain things. And so I'm hoping we will start having singing uh, in the coming weeks and um, also bring back things like the servers helping um, with the processions and things like that, which I think can be done in a, in a safe manner. Uh, and we can also, I think, particularly in these summer months when we can be outside anyways, uh, I hope we can also do coffee uh, outside on a regular basis. Um, and to that end, uh, if anybody would be willing to um, make the coffee <laughs> next week, um, uh, the machine and the coffee will be at the back. Uh, I think we'll have the milk already here. But if, um, if anybody would be willing to do that, please talk to me after the service. Just involves putting the machine on and setting it up um, and making the tea before the end of the service. Um, oh, talk to me or one of the church wardens. We'll make sure we put somebody on the, on the rotor to do it in the coming weeks. I um, think that's, sorry, yeah, so I think that's, that's basically what we'll do going forward for the time being, and we'll wait and see what, what data shows us going forward, but I'm not inclined to make any sudden movements, if that makes sense. Um, <laughs> today... Uh, at 3.30, youth group will be meeting in here uh, for those that would like to join uh, or come along for youth group. That'll be at 3.30. And then our Compline will be this evening at 9 o'clock on Zoom. Um, if anybody felt that they would uh, rather come to Compline in person, we can also, um, I'm wondering about whether we stream it from in here and people can join us. Uh, so do let me know. Um, during the week, we've started opening up a little bit more. So morning prayer uh, on Monday through Thursday is streamed at 9.20. Um, but you're also welcome to come and join me in the chapel for morning prayer on any of those days. And likewise, we're now having the Eucharist on Wednesdays at 11 for anybody who would like to come and join me for that. Um, also, the stay and play is now in place. We had our first session last Monday, which was 
great success. We had a few, but not too many, and it was it felt quite comfortable and and so on. So if you know any um, youngsters under fives uh, who would like to bring their their carer or their parent along uh, on a Monday at ten o'clock, please do encourage them to come along. We um, we aren't taking bookings though. We have a sort of maximum number so in theory we would send people away when we got to it but i don't imagine we're going to get there too suddenly um social and fundraising committee is meeting tomorrow evening ah and then uh, the other notice is that uh philip Voke, some of you may already know is going to be swimming some incredible number of laps 300 laps doing a three mile swim uh to raise money for the manor society uh, originally, I emailed him because they were looking for people to run a 10k race, and I know he was a great—he's a great runner. But uh, because of an injury, he he felt actually he'd be better off swimming. Uh, so he has a GoFundMe page, which I think is a notice sheet. But you can, if you don't want to use the GoFundMe page, but would rather give a cash donation, uh, there's a sign-up sheet on the table at the back. If you put your name and contact details on there, he'll get in touch with you uh, if you'd like to donate towards. Uh, the Manor Society on, on, uh, as a result of his, his great swim. Uh, do put your orders of service in the basket on the table at the back on your way out the door and take the notice sheet home, which has various dates and things in it. I think unless, oh, and gardeners, I assume, are meeting on Thursday as well. Uh, anybody who wants to join in with the gardening. Um, so um, I think that's everything, unless somebody waves at me. Nope, good. Please stand. The Lord be with you. The peace of God, which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, amen. amen.